He gets help down low from Reggie Wilson, last year's Valley Newcomer of the Year. On the opposite side, the Creighton Blue Jays have a new coach in Rick Johnson, but they retain a great backcourt duo. Dwan Cole leads his team in scoring. He gets help from Latrell Wrightsell, the top man in the Valley, in assists. Illinois State meets Creighton next. Torium in Omaha, Nebraska, we have Illinois State going up against Creighton. A pleasant good morning, everyone. It's 11 a.m. Central Time start here. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Two teams, Illinois State and Creighton, do have a lot in common. They're coached by the two youngest coaches in the Valley. And Bob Bender at 33 for Illinois State and Rick Johnson in his first year at Creighton. He is just 32 years old. When you look at the tournaments of the last three years, they've been won by these two teams, and Creighton are the defending champions. But, Chris Piper, the similarities seem to end there. When you look at the team's strengths and the team's weaknesses, it's like night and day. Well, for Creighton, they used to be a perimeter player, or, per, or act, actually an inside team for the last four years. They've had Harstead and Gallagher inside. Both those players have graduated and gone on. So now their game's gone to the perimeter. Dewan Cole and Latrell Wrightsell. Wrightsell's their point guard, came on strong toward the end of the year last year. And Dewan Cole's their leading scorer. On the opposite side, Illinois State, we don't talk that much about their perimeter. They are a stronger team inside, and it's great for them to have Scott Fowler back. He missed an entire year with a knee injury. Well, that really hurt him last year when he went down with a knee injury early in the season and missed the whole season. He's a big, dominating player inside, put on a lot of weight. He's big on the boards, and you can see what he's done point-wise for him, the leading scorer. But another player they've got inside is Reggie Wilson. Get a chance here to take a look at a nice pass inside, then a good post up, and turn to hit the little jumper inside for Illinois State. Now, both teams come into this game at 3-6 and six overall, but that's not their mentality. That's not their game face today. They're 1-0 in conference play, and as you well know, Chris, conference play much tougher than non-conference, and especially here in the early going. you got to win these games. Well, they both would like to have better records than 3-6, and six, but they're both 1-0, and oh, and they've won both of those games on the road, which is tough to do in the Missouri Valley Conference. So but these teams are ready. They've got to get more consistency going on and start the, new, start the year new, actually the new year, uh, in the conference. That's right. Happy New Year to you, too, Chris. <laughs> We've got Creighton and we've got Illinois State. They're coming up next. We will meet the starters when we come back to Omaha. Today's Mississippi Miss Auditorium for this Missouri Valley Conference contest, the 24th between the Creighton Blue Jays and Illinois State Redbirds. Let's meet the starting lineups. For Illinois State at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Newton, Massachusetts, number 21, Scott Taylor. For Creek at forward, a 6'3 junior from Crawfordsville, Indiana, number 12, Matt Petty. For Illinois State at forward, a 6'6 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 4, Reggie Wilson. For Creek at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Houston, Texas, number 32, Andre Tucker. For Illinois State at center, a 6'5 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 42, Scott Fowler. For Creighton at center, a 6'10 freshman from Minnetonka, Minnesota, number 54, Mike For Illinois State at guard, a six-foot junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 14, Richard Thomas. For Creighton at guard, a six-one senior from Gary, Indiana, number 24, the Trail Wrightson. For Illinois State at guard, a six-two sophomore. From Quincy, Illinois, number 34, Todd Wimhainer. At guard for Creighton, 5'10", senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 14, Duan Cole. Head coach for Illinois State Redbirds is Bob Bender. Creighton is coached by Rick Johnson. The assistant coach is Billy Kennedy, Lonnie Thompson, Reggie Morris, and Todd Illinois State looking for their second straight road victory in the Missouri Valley Conference. On the opposite side, Creighton won the other night to snap a four-game losing streak. They'd like you might see a zone, but don't look for that too often here today. But there will be some key matchups, and we'll talk about those 
in just a few moments. Right now it's Amos and Wilson for the jump. Senior versus the freshman. One by the senior goes to Richard Thomas, the point guard for the Redbirds. Thomas taking it in to the outside. Taylor back out to Wemhainer. Now to Thomas again. Down low they find Wilson and Amos fouls him and that's something that Creighton does not want to have happen early and Wilson is hurt. That's something Illinois State's got to be concerned about. But we saw the five man motion offense that Bob Bender is trying to bring in here to help the offense. And that time it was a great pass underneath. You see the nice pass across Wilson out of position a little slow with the feet. It's hurt him so far this year. A lot of foul trouble averaging over three and a half fouls. But that was a that was definitely a hard foul. See him coming up going to get him right across the head with the elbow. Boy he keeps following through and he makes sure that that shot's not going anywhere. Well, one of Amos's problems as a freshman has been the foul trouble that he has been in. And in the last game oddly enough he had no fouls. They're changing things with their post defense before they wanted Amos to play in front of the post player. Now they've got him playing behind him because they were getting beat too early on the lobs and also Amos was getting into foul trouble. The last few games it seems to have worked out better overall defensively for Creighton but I think that in Bob Bender's case he knows that there's going to be some mismatches down low in terms of Wilson and Fowler so you know they're going to test Amos early and often. <laughs> And how early and often may depend on Wilson's knee. Tucker actually did a nice job early of uh, of getting out of getting around in the post that time. We'll check out Wilson when we come back to Omaha. His first one to give the Redbirds a one nothing lead. Just about to say a little tough for you to come right in off the game. Actually he's still warm though. There's only 12 seconds off the clock but Mike's only shooting 52 percent from the line this year. Hits both of those. That'll help the percentage. Two nothing. Redbirds are leading it. Illinois State likes to change up the defenses, full court press. Almost causing the turnover. Now Petty will kick it out to right cell. Ball movement, patience are two of the big virtues offensively that the Blue Jays will need today. And they want to work on the screens, the double screens, and some good cuts to put some pressure on the basket. Here's right cell. He'll play the point. Cole this year becomes the two guard, the shooting guard. Great so having some problems that time, JP, trying to figure out what kind of defense. Illinois State was in as they started out with an original full court zone press dropped back to a zone but then they tried to match up man out of it. Taylor called for holding on the baseline his first foul. It's going to be a strange matchup here in Taylor on Matt Petty height wise and weight wise and that may change if Taylor can't keep up but Bob Bender has confidence he can. Here's Cole kick out right so far side to Petty who shoots the three better than the two. Petty picked up there by Taylor. Taylor is four inches taller and 35 pounds heavier. Cole with Wemhamer on him. Well, the thing in Illinois State's favor in that matchup is, is Petty's really not a scorer on his own. He likes to hit the shot when he's standing still. So if Taylor can just stick with him, shouldn't be much of a problem along the drive. Right cell with Thomas on him. Now it's Andre Tucker back out to right cell. Leading the Valley this year in assists. Spinning in the lane. Trying to dish off. Tucker expecting it. Doesn't get it. Here's Amos on a big rebound. Kick out to Petty, but a whistle had sounded. And Wemhainer committing the foul. They're going to need rebounds like that from Amos if Creighton is going to come away with a home victory today. Mike Vandegaard got away with a little problem there because uh, he turned his head. Dewan Cole was driving. He thought that the shot was up, but actually Dewan passed it off to Tucker. Tucker just missed that little five-footer. Petty outside the Cole. Now it's Matt Petty again. Duan Cole has led this team in scoring the last four times. Amos looking on the lob for Tucker was deflected against Vandegaard. He goes up strong and Andre Tucker hits it. The sophomore from Houston, Texas. 2-2. Two, 18-16 two. to go. First half here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Vandegaard. On the drive, Amos with him. Couple of pumps out to Wemhainer. The old reverse pass around the back. Only pass he had. Fowler, his first attempt is a good one. And Fowler, who leads this team in field goal percentage, adds to it there, his right cell. Fowler just cleared out that time. Used his weight to push his way into the lane, create an opening. Baseline jumper for Amos is too long. Taylor clears the boards for Richard Thomas. Well, we talk about Creighton's perimeter game, and their first two shots are inside the paint. Actually, first three shots. Fowler looking, brings it way out. The five-man motion offense. 
Down nice low, pass. Thomas on the entry. Richard Thomas that's is on the board. That's what they're looking for in that five-man motion offense. You keep the lane open, look for the backdoor cuts, and they got it there. Duan Cole coming into the lane. The jumper is off. Taylor on the rebound. Here's Thomas in transition, but has to wait. No one else was with him. Thomas against right cell. Now it's Fowler. Low to Vandegaard, working against Amos. That's the strategy, but the miss by Vandegaard. Rebound, Matt Petty underneath. Tough shot, nice defense by Mike Amos not to give up any, any openings. Cole loves the three, but this one doesn't go, and Cole is 0 for 2 right now in this one. Last time he had a morning start was against Nebraska. He scored 35 points and didn't miss a shot until a desperation one at the buzzer at the first half. Petty, now to right cell. Latrell right cell giving it out again to Petty. There's Taylor, Tucker. Right cell, 18-footer is good. Latrell right cell on the board for his first couple of points. He's been averaging 12 this season, 6-4. Creighton down by two to Illinois State, and Thomas brings it up. Latrell used a little pick on the high post to get Richard Thomas off him far enough that he can get the shot, get the 15-foot jumper. Vandegaard down low, cutting his Wemhainer. Kick out, Thomas from three-point range, and he hits it. Richard Thomas, who shoots the three at only 27%, gets three big ones there. Here's right cell, a five-point Illinois State lead, the biggest lead of the day. Cole, outside right cell, down low. Amos was free. One-hander, no good, too soft on the shot. Coming back is Thomas on the run. Vandegaard was open, and he didn't spot him or didn't think he could deliver it. Wemhainer. And a foul is going to be called on Duan Cole. Both of these teams, for different reasons this year, have gotten into foul trouble, and one of their keys, and Bob Bender knows it, is to get their own team to the free throw line more. And we've got the first substitution coming in for Creighton. It's going to be Derek Bain coming in for Latrell Wrightsell. Bain has great leaping ability, a 44 and a half inch vertical leap. Well, in, it's unusual for Illinois State not to get a lot of free throws because they're trying to get the ball inside. Fowler goes to the line the most, so he's making it. Here's Petty, Amos, turn around in the lane, gets the roll. Not pretty, but it goes down. Well, the big guy's actually showing some pretty nice moves. He, he shoved him down that time. That's where the not pretty comes in, but he knows what to do once he gets the ball. Thomas on the pull-up, that's no good. And look like a Vandegaard. And out of play, 15-13 remaining. A 9-6 lead here for the Redbirds, and Kern will check in for Fowler. Brian Kern, 6'9", the tallest player on this squad, and probably the strongest. He weighs 240 pounds, an all-state offensive tackle on this high school football team. So he and Amos may have a good battle going on. Well, there's no lack of uh, size inside. Size meaning weight. <laughs> These guys are big. Here's Cole looking for the basket on the baseline. That's no good. Tip in. No. Gold. I think basket interference. Derek Bain jumped up and grabbed on the rim. Actually, Mike Amos tipped it in. Derek wouldn't have grabbed on the rim. Watch the shot here from Dewan Cole along the baseline. Now Derek Bain's going to come up here and grab on the rim. There it is. Yeah. Interference. Richard Thomas will bring it back. Three-point lead here for the Redbirds. Knocked away. Can Bain get it? No. Great effort, though, defensively by Creighton. Rick Johnson, their coach, expected a very tough game, especially in the paint. And he said one of his keys, in fact, his first key was the interior defense and how they handle the Redbirds. Right cell checks in now for Petty. Well, it looks like uh, Creighton has gone back to trying to deny the ball into the post. One of the problems when you play behind the post is you're going to get in some foul trouble. See, what right there is what happened to Mike Amos. He was behind him. Tried to react too late. Now, one of the problems that why they, they're switching back and forth between playing in front and behind, look at Amos. He's behind him, and then all of a sudden he decides he's going to get around, but it's too late. You've got to get around in the, in the beginning before the play even happens. That's two fouls on Amos. There's not a lot of depth on this Creighton squad, so when the big guy has to sit, you lose a lot. Vandegaard in trouble on the trap, and he walks. So the Blue Jays do a nice job enforcing that turnover, and they'll get the ball and a chance to cut the lead. They trail by three at 9-6, and Scott Fowler comes in. Expect both of these coaches to run players in and out. Rick Johnson wanted to rotate a lot of his players down low to defend against the big men of Illinois State, and you know that Bob Bender has to be concerned about the perimeter play of Creighton, and you want those fresh players out there. Here's Wrightsell coming back. 
himself. And on the dribble, Tucker putting up the screen. Fitz has just checked into the lineup. Kick out to Bain. Juan Cole wanted to take it up. Now outside the right cell. Tough matchup for Winhammer against Cole. Amos is quick. Good. Big Mike decided he's going to take the shots tonight. Only averaging five points on the season so far, but he's already got four four shots up. Well, it's a good thing for Creighton because Cole is scoreless. Here's Fowler. Is that out of his range? It was there. Here comes right cell off the Amos rebound. Outside Bain. Pull up jumper. Offensive. Bain getting charged with that foul. It will be his first foul and the fourth team foul on Creighton. There are two on the Redbirds. Well, Derek Bain is so athletic. Only six foot, but his first two points of the year are on a tip dunk. See him going up there. A lot of times a guy thinks he can just jump around him, but good defense on the part of Illinois State. Fowler did a great job in taking that charge. Chad Altadonna will check into the lineup now for the Redbirds. Altadonna, 50% from the floor and 45% from three-point land. So we may see a little switch in strategy here. Richard Thomas and Altadonna will work the guard spots. Still no word on Reggie Wilson. And we've got a foul on Bain. That's his second one. These are the kind of fouls that Rick Johnson gets frustrated about. And that is going to be now the fifth foul. Well, because nobody's going to hurt you from that standpoint, from out there. Right. It, out in the three-point line, especially after he picked up his dribble, he's not going to hurt you. But they've been letting got teams go to the line 30 times a game so far this year. Kern did a little walking. Still 9-8. Redbirds are leading it with 13-28 to go in the first half as Bob Bender looks on. Right cell will bring it up. Wrightsell did so well last year towards the end of the season when he was brought into the lineup to team up with Juan Cole previously. Wrightsell subbed for Cole. That took a lot of pressure off Cole also, being able to move him to the two-guard spot. But Latrell handled the ball, more of a natural playmaker. And it's also changed the matchup. Thomas did a great job defensively last year against Cole, but now he's guarding Wrightsell because he is the point guard. Amos, way out to Bain. Low, Tucker in the lane. Good move by Andre Tucker. He has four points. Well, ball reversal got Creighton that point there. Because, that's two points because Andre Tucker posted up initially on the far side, but when the ball was swung, Fowler was stuck behind him. And Creighton has the lead at 10-9. Out the down of the current, almost a five-second violation. Here's Richard Thomas. Picked up there by Bain on the dribble. Thomas off of the screen from current from the outside. Way short. But we've got a foul underneath. And it looks like it's Fowler who has committed the foul. And it is going to be Scott Fowler committing his first foul, the third team foul on the Redbirds. Well, Thomas only hitting 33% on the year. He's already taken a couple of really tough shots, and that puts Scott Fowler in a bad position there. puts all their big men in a bad position because if you take a shot that's not going to give a, a good rebound, your big men usually go falling for it. Speaking of big men, Vanderheit is in for Amos, and Antoine Hicks is picking up right cell here. That last shot that Thomas took may have been one of the reasons Bob Bender gave him the gate. Oh, nice pass. Vanderheit couldn't get it through. Here's Altadonna from Kern. Long pass on the outside. It's Fitch to Fowler. Way out of the lane. Fowler on the high post. Out to Hicks. Antoine Hicks, a senior for the Redbirds. Started in place of Thomas when he went out with an injury. Turnaround. Fowler. He's so tough down low, he has four points. He's going to be tough for anyone to guard. Well, he creates great space with his body, leaves him that opening. Right cell on the fake, coming through, doesn't go. And let's see, both officials were looking towards one another. Looks like it's going against Vanderheit. Fowler getting in to take the charge. So Vanderheit, who looked like he could have had an easy couple, ends up instead with a foul. A one-point lead for the visitors from Illinois State when we come back to Omaha. On the left side, this is Altadonna. Outside the Fitch. Coming back, right cell. Outside Bain on the drive. Lost it, but there's Vanderheit. It was stripped away, and Vanderheit says, look what I found. What a nice pass. That perimeter game of Creighton is really opening up the inside. Getting the big man some points early. Altadonna to Hicks. Outside, Altadonna can hit the three. Misses that time. Current fighting for the rebound. Everybody to the floor. It's the alternate possession. 
And the arrow's going Creighton's way. Good hustle when you see those bodies hit the floor. Two big bodies, Vander Height and Kern going down on the wood for that. Cagle now checking into the lineup for Illinois State. Watch his shot from Altadonna coming out long. Kern just going to go falling down on that ball. Vanderheide also. Woo. Vanderheide came down on Kern's knee. They Eric, didn't need another one of those. Eric Dantzler checking into the lineup for Vanderheide. Want to tell you that Reggie Wilson, if you missed it in the first minute of play, went down after a foul down low from Amos. He has gone to the hospital for x-rays of his lower right leg. We hope he is all right. Right cell. The dribble against Kegel. Down low. Tucker. Tough play down underneath. It's kicked out to Dantzler. That's probably a good no-foul, some contact on both sides. Here's Bain coming through. And as he switched it to the left hand, he didn't get it to fall down, but he does draw the foul. Foul will be on the Redbirds underneath. Talked about Derek Bain's athleticism. He's looking at him just turning the corner, going all the way to the basket. Scott Taylor not able to get in there and stop him. And once he gets near the goal, he's going to go up straight to the rim because he can jump. They've given the foul to Fitch. It is his first. And Bain will go to the free throw line. He is 0 for 2 this year in terms of free throws. How about this, though? We've gone not quite 10 minutes, 9 minutes and 20 seconds, and Dewan Cole does not have a point. And still Creighton is up by one. That might be even more surprising. If you would tell me at this juncture that Cole would be scoreless, I would say that Creighton would be losing. Bain gets his first free throw of you know, the season. In talking to the Creighton people, it's really, I don't think it's as big a factor to DeJuan Cole if he scores as it is to the Creighton coaching staff. They'd like to see him take more opportunities at the basket. But he's an unselfish player. He really only takes what he's got. And he took that. And now he's got a three on one. Right cell, coming in, missed. Cole the rebound in the Valley of the Giants. He scores. So his first two don't come from the outside or on a drive, but off a rebound offensively. Well, Illinois State is a little overmatched right now. Creighton's got a quick team in there. A lot of guards on the floor. Bob Bender told us he didn't really want to have to play Creighton's game and, and match up with, with their substitutions. But right now, they've got an awfully quick team in there. He might have to. Here's Bain coming in, the one-hander, no good. And it's rebounded by Taylor. Bob Bender says he may have to switch to the three-guard lineup if they're getting beat. And right now they are. This is the biggest lead for either side at five points. Creighton with the edge. Creighton's actually got four guards in there. Eric Dancer's only 6'3". Cagle. Outside Altadonna trying to fake around Duan Cole. Shot clock, a lot of time. Cole strips it. He's coming in alone. Duan Cole with a layup. Two big plays by Cole defensively. And by my count, that'll be 10 points by Creighton off turnovers. None for the Redbirds. That's the difference in the game. Creighton's picking it up defensively, picking up Illinois State right at half court. That's the kind of defense that Illinois State would like to play. Pass down low, and an easy one for Fitch. Great move, got both Creighton players up in the air. Steve Fitch able to just to drop off a little layup. Bain, Taylor Redbirds needed that basket. Here's Cole against Altadonna on the pull up. And a foul underneath. It's gonna be on Tucker. Bob Bender may have to make an adjustment, though, because it's obvious that Cole is having no problems picking out Donna's pockets. And we see Thomas right now ready to check in. Well, Chad wasn't getting a lot of help inside either. Creighton was shutting off the passing lanes into the post, into Scott Fowler. Chad out there trying to find somebody to pass to. See Dewan Cole with the, with the steal. We are talking about Chad not having any openings. Easy layup. Well, Dewan Cole is always going to be up there in terms of steals. He leads this team. He and Wrightsell together have almost six per game. Here's Mr. Fowler. Good year. And he's been very consistent since coming back into the starting lineup. He has four points today. Misses. It's short. And here's Tucker on the rebound to Wrightsell. Latrell Wrightsell picked up by Cagle. Momentum on the Blue Jays' side for the moment. Dantzler outside to Tucker. No help. Tucker doesn't know where to go. No one's on him. Well, they, Illinois State knows that Andre Tucker is not going to shoot the ball unless he's inside the paint. Right side, I thought, walked, and so did the official. Lost it on the dribble and then got the feet mixed up. 
and had so. a situation that time where you don't really know if it was the, the defense on Illinois State's part. You can see the turnovers there, but Creighton just couldn't get into an offensive scheme of things. Everybody looking. Thomas outside. Fitch, that's a three if it goes. It doesn't. Rebound Fowler against two Blue Jays, and then off the tip, it's White Shell. Coming right back to Bain. Cole getting ready to check back into the lineup for the Blue Jays. And a whistle. Underneath, and it's going to be on Dantzler. Underneath. So Eric Dantzler committing the foul. It will be his first, but already the eighth for Creighton. So it's the bonus. It's the one and one. As it was the last time down the floor when Fowler had missed it. Toughest call for an official, I think, is the action going on inside the paint. Now, this year they've decided that they're going to try and call that a little tighter, clean it up. But the question is, is who's fouling? Because you've got two guys pushing against each other, and it's really a judgment call. Taylor connects on it. So Scott Taylor makes the first free throw. And for Scott Taylor, he's been hot. That makes it 15 of his last 16 free throws. Vandegaard checks in for Fitch. And Taylor will have another crack at the free throw line. It's an 18-14 lead. Blue Jays are on top. Taylor missed. Maybe a lane violation or a foul. Vandegaard, Vandegaard. pushing off all the way, had the elbow in the back. They call him for the foul, going for the offensive rebound. Vandegaard's first foul, and that should be the fifth team foul. Watch Vandergaard coming across the lane now. He's just going to get, try and, look at that, knock them out with the body. Now, see, that's what we're talking about there right there. Looks like a loose ball, two guys going for it. Who draws the contact? Went against Creighton one time, Illinois State the next. Blue Jays by four, 7.57 left in the first half. Here's Cole. On the outside, Cole had just come back into the lineup for Bain. Petty on the cut. Down low. The power move from Tucker. It's short, and the rebound by Taylor. Two Tucker. great passes there. One to Petty, and then Petty off to Andre Tucker. But Andre just not able to gather himself all the way and get him square to the goal. Right so. Almost had the length of the court if you pick that off. On the missed shot, there's Cole for the rebound. Cole leading it for Petty on the layup. He missed. Went with the left hand coming down on that right side and missed it. Coming back, it's Richard Thomas. Petty not used to being the lead man on those fast breaks. He's used to the pull-up jumpers from three-point land. He was too close. He was running so hard. I think he uh, was going a little faster than he thought he was. Taylor on the outside. Cagle. Still a four-point lead. We've not had a basket, though, for the last couple of minutes. Vandegaard up strong off the glass. Good move by Vandegaard, who now has four points. Nice move. Good offside help by Andre Tucker, but Vandegaard was able to get through him. Double pump and get it off the glass. Vandegaard shooting 15% better from the floor than he did a year ago. And Billy King, one of Bob Bender's assistant coaches, said he's not taking those three-point shots anymore, so he's staying within his range. That's helped him. Right cell. Now, Illinois State is not playing Andre Tucker. Andre Tucker is going to get the, the foul for the moving pick. But the thing is, Andre is catching the ball out beyond the three-point line, which leaves Illinois State. Scott Fowler's guarding him, doesn't even play him. If he's going to be catching the ball, he needs to catch it in a little more. Make Illinois State play him honest. Catch it in closer to the basket. Wemhainer is ready to check into the lineup for Cagle. That foul was on Tucker, and that's his second foul. 18-16, though, the Redbirds have come back. And they're down by just a pair, and it's the bonus. One and one. Okay, one more foul, and it's going to be the automatic two free throws here for Illinois State. And the way this game's going, you would expect Creighton to pick up, oh, another foul, but still 6.35 to go. Taylor at the line. He's been one of their better free throw shooters, and Taylor connects on that one. Illinois State is just playing so aggressive defensively. Now, this foul that puts Taylor on the line was an offensive foul, but on the defensive end, they're really picking him up a half court, trying to deny the passing lane and play hard on the, on the ball. Taylor makes two. Last year, they were last in the Valley in free throws. This year, they are shooting them much better. We have a tie game. We're coming right back. Flow going. Things were going his way, especially with those points off turnovers. Now it's tied, and Creighton is in foul trouble with nine team fouls off the hands of Bain. More the unforced error that time. Last three times down now, Creighton has not had a chance to shoot at the basket. Amos is getting ready to check back into the lineup for the Blue Jays. Fowler underneath. 
and he walked. So Creighton forces that turnover on the part of Scott Fowler, so they're even up there. And now Amos will check into the lineup for Andre Tucker. Creighton double teaming down on the post once the ball gets it. Derek Bain coming in there, forces Scott Fowler to travel. Didn't have any place to go. Coming back is right cell. What do you do when they double team down on you, JP? Little quiz? I was going to ask you that question. Pass the ball back out. There you go. You make it sound so simple, this game of basketball. It is. It's just a, such an easy game. That's why I'm sitting here, right? <laughs> Put in play now by the Redbirds. Thomas with Taylor. Thomas will be picked up there by a right cell. Part of the reason for the 7-2 run, taking nothing away from Altadonna, but they had more turnovers when he was in there. Thomas has settled them down, and Taylor connects. Give him five points. She leads all scorers. Tough to ask Chad Altadonna, who's really a shooting guard and a freshman, to come in and play against Dewan Thomas, or Dewan Cole, who is really one of the best players at any position in the Valley. And he proves it day in and day out. Dantzler will bring it back out to the perimeter where Petty awaits it. Can you believe it? 61% of the shots taken by Creighton come from their perimeter players. Here's Wenhainer coming back the other way. It was only 36% a year ago. Here's Thomas underneath. No good. Big rebound. Taylor. And he missed. And he missed another put back. How many chances? He doesn't get another one there. Here's Amos. Now to Bain. Could have given his team a four-point edge. Instead, it's a two-point lead for the visitors from Normal, Illinois. Off a deflection. Last touched apparently by Fowler. Or did he foul? He apparently did foul. Foul on Fowler leaning over the top. Mike Amos got away with a bad pass there. Tough entry angle trying to pass the ball into the post from the high post area. Well, one more foul, and Creighton can get themselves into a bonus situation at the free throw line. Right now, it is the sixth. Tucker checks right back in. Dantzler goes out. On the opposite side, Kern has checked back into the lineup for Fowler. They have both coaches we knew coming in were going to go deep for various reasons, and they've done that very early in the game. Petty on the outside. Right there you see the weakness of Scott Taylor guard. Petty took him a long time to get over that pick, get around. Petty actually had the three-point shot, but didn't take it. Ryan Kern fouls. That means the bonus situation now, the one and one for Mike Amos. And what kind of a free throw shooter is he, do you ask? Only about 58% for the freshman. Well, he's only got 12 attempts on the year, which is unusual for a big man inside the paint. Also tough for a freshman to build up a percentage when he's only had a few attempts at the basket. He connects on the first one. He was the runner-up last year, or a finalist, I should say, for Mr. Basketball in Minnesota. He has five points, three rebounds today. Amos misses on the second one. Picked up there on the rebound by Taylor. And now Wenhainer getting instructions from Bob Bender in front of the Redbird bench. Here's Wenhainer picked up by Cole. 435 left in the first half. A one-point Redbird lead on the outside. Thomas to Taylor. High post. On the skip pass. Vandergaard. That's the three that we told him he wasn't taking this year. And he missed that one. He's not supposed to be taking him. Here comes right cell. Faking, almost moved the pivot foot. Amos back out to right cell. Latrell, the senior from Gary, Indiana. Outside Amos. Down low, Tucker and Vandegaard on a blocking foul. So give it to Vandegaard, his second, and Tucker will be at the line. He made four important free throws the other night in a win against Eastern Illinois. See Mike Vandegaard trying to help out a little bit there. Got too far off his man. Cannot let that pass go right through the lane. At such a low angle, Mike, off the ball too far in that instance. Petty going out. So is Amos. Vanderheit will check back into the lineup. Bain has also come back in for Creighton. And now Charles Barnes making his first appearance here for the Redbirds to Vandergaard, who will sit out. Creighton's done a nice job of keeping the paint open, spreading the floor out. Illinois State has come out on them, pressuring them. They like the pressure on the ball. That's opened up uh, passing lanes like you just saw that was able to get Andre Tucker to the line. Tucker's 9 for 10. 
this season from the free throw line. He is deaf in the left ear. Had a benign tumor removed from that ear some 10 years ago. What a story he is. Here's Wemhainer. Open man, wide open, and missing was Taylor, but he did draw a foul underneath. Good recognition, though, on the part of Illinois State. And we'll watch it again. Creighton came up for the double team, and Wemhainer did a nice job of going up in the air and passing that ball off to Taylor. He had no chance of, of getting the dunk there, but he got the foul. Right cell committing it. It's his first, tenth foul, so they're in the automatic bonus of two free throws. Taylor got it. Taylor now has six points and seven rebounds. So he's got some good numbers in the early going. This is a guy that averages a little better than four rebounds a game, and he's got seven right now. Here's a guy that's really picked it up a notch with Wilson going out with a knee injury. Illinois State has not been able to count on anybody. The inconsistency has been the name of the game for them this year. They've had six different leading rebounders. Bob Bender talked about the fact that they really don't have one guy that they can count on every game getting those rebounds. Good play to save it by Wemhainer, and now it's Richard Thomas. A one-point lead here for the Redbirds, the visitors. Each of these teams 1-0 in the Valley, and they both won on the road. From the outside, that's not even close. Not a good shot there by Barnes took it. Forced it. Here's Cole. Picked up by one hander. Now it's right cell. Would you believe Cole only has four of the 21 points here from Creighton? Oh, right cell, great pass to Bain. It goes. <laughs> Took a while, but it went down. But what a pass from yeah, right cell. That was definitely a creeper. That ball wanted to go in. It was. Well, right looked like it was coming out. Foul on Taylor. Right cell deserved a basket for that kind of a pass. Yeah, that was a nice pass right to the heart of Illinois State's defense once again. Um, Here's Rick Johnson who replaced Tony Baroni, who led Creighton to three years, three straight years of 20 plus wins. And Tony Baroni really put Creighton Blue Jay basketball back on the map. And he's now at Texas A&M. And want to wish Tony the very best. He was a great salesman for the Missouri Valley Conference, not just for Creighton basketball, but for the conference as well. Tony's now at Texas A&M, and one of his assistants, Dick Fick, at Moorhead State. Those two, those two coaches were very helpful to all of us media personnel here in the Valley over the last few years, so we do thank them for their efforts. Bain connects on the free throw. Five points for Derek Bain. Here is Rick Johnson. He said the toughest part is not really the coaching as a head coach, but everything else that goes into being a head coach. You've got to really manage your time. Everyone wants a little piece of you. Bain will get the free throw, so he now has six. And Creighton now has the lead again. It is by three here in Omaha. The Creighton big men are doing a job against Illinois State. Now Creighton's picking up in a full court 1-2-2 two, two press. Richard Thomas, and now as they beat it, the Redbirds, Creighton backs off. Both teams in some foul trouble in the first half. It's been a problem for them all season. Creighton dropping back into a 2-3 zone. They were struggling the other night against East Eastern Illinois, went to a zone, able to pull the game out. Thomas with a jumper from 18 doesn't go. Barnes over the back of Bain, and he commits the foul. Not much argument there or there shouldn't be from Charles Barnes, right over the back of Bain. Bob Bender looking on. His father was his high school coach. He is a hometowner from the Bloomington Normal area. Well, here's something to look at, the shot selection. Illinois stay with 10 points in the paint. Can you believe Creighton has more? That's not what we said in the opening of the show, was it, Chris? Well, you're or always you wrong. Said, I said, I'm always wrong, that's said. right. I didn't say it. Creighton is actually beating the uh, Illinois State defense on the perimeter and not making a nice pass inside of the paint. It hasn't been one-on-one uh, -on -one moves, big man against big man in the paint. It's been nice passes from guards like Cole and, and Wrightsell getting the big man inside the easy layups. Bain missed both, so it's just a three-point lead. Redbirds have to do something, though, from the floor. One of their last seven. And this year in their wins, they've been shooting 52%, but in their losses, under 40. Shot over 57 against Southwest Missouri State in the big road victory. Here's Thomas. Wemhainer from three. No good. Wemhainer, after a great game against Southwest Missouri State, came into this game all for his last nine field goal attempts. And he'll add to it here today. 
because he has not scored. Illinois State was shooting 43% about six or seven minutes ago, and ever since they have gone ice cold. Three from Cole, it doesn't go. Cole having a tough day offensively, but Bain. But Derek Bain is having a great game to, here tonight. He's only played in three games up till today. But part of the problem was he missed a lot of the preseason with a hip injury. He is a heck of an athlete. Well, this is a career game for Bain, who does not get many minutes. He may start to, if this is any indication. Here's Thomas on the outside. A five-point lead matches the previous high. Wemhainer way short. It may have been tipped by right self. Here's Thomas keeping it in play. Richard Thomas setting up the play. Right cell defending against him. Todd's own, Todd Wimmer's only shot 21% from three from the three-point line so far this season and missed both those last ones badly. Fitch. Off Wimhainer. Almost had the backcourt violation instead. It's a two-on-one now, two-on-two. Cole put it in. And a blocking foul as well. So it adds insult to injury. Wemhainer was the man that lost it. And the man that takes charges better than anyone on this squad, at least he did last year, gets charged here. Creighton's defense, even in the in the press, forcing the turnover. You see Wimhander not getting up high enough to get that pass. He made a nice save, but actually probably should have held on to the ball because Creighton ends up getting two points plus the free throw. It's kind of like saving the ball underneath your own basket. He didn't really get any help from, from Cole, though. I don't think Dewan thought he was going to be able to save it. Six points and three boards for Cole, but he's had the quick hands and forced a few turnovers. I said help from Cole. I meant Thomas. Cole gave, Cole gave him all the help he wanted. He got the, the layup and the foul. Creighton is on a nine to nothing run. Here's Altadonna. A minute three before the end of, half, of the first half. Altadonna kick out to Thomas. Now it's Barnes. And Thomas, you know, with Fowler out of there, this is a, obviously a different team. They're not getting that much respect on defense from Creighton, and they're not getting the good shots. Fitz will get a good three, though, and that'll cut the lead to six. Illinois State's last four or five shots have been from the perimeter. Like you said, with Fowler not inside, they don't really have anybody to go to, the, go to with Wilson out with the early knee injury. My correction, it's a five-point lead, 30-25. Blue Jays. Cole. Now they're going to settle it down. The shot clock is off, 18 on the game clock, so they'll work it for the last one. Try to take a bigger lead into the locker room at halftime. 30-25, it's by five, and now Wright still has to do something. Down to eight seconds on the shot clock. Cole, the pull-up, that's three if it goes. It doesn't. Barnes, the rebound, sides it to Thomas. One second, it will count if it goes, but it's not even close as the buzzer sounds. Pressure so far. Not getting Scott Fowler in there. Over and back. That's a bad turnover to start the half. Petty right in front of us. Now tosses into right cell. Creighton going with the same starting lineup that began the game. One change on the opposite side. Vandergaard in for the injured Reggie Wilson. Still no report on Wilson. Underneath. Tucker blocked and Vandergaard fouled him. Well, Vandergaard first was beaten by the pass, and then, to add insult to injury, came in with the foul besides. Well, they got tangled up there coming through. You're going to watch Vandergaard is actually getting off the floor right there, and that opens up the inside for Tucker to get the pass. You know, you made a good point before about free throws. For Illinois State, they uh, are shooting 24 for 36 in the last three games from the line. Tucker knew that was a miss. And they're up opponents for Illinois State, 54 of 76. So in their last three games, the Redbirds have had 40 less free throws than the opposition in terms of attempts and 30 less free throws made. That's why you lose games. Yeah, yeah that's a quite a big differential there, 10 points a game. Creighton has had the same problems. Fowler across the way. Here's Taylor out to Wemhainer. The Taylor Petty matchup seems to have worked very well. Here's Fowler underneath, taken away by Amos, and he gives it to right cell. And he has not scored in this game. Illinois State got him the ball, but good defense by Amos and right cell. They're going to have to pick him up off the break. Right cell with four points. He's been averaging 15 in his last couple. Usually a team likes to go to build back or start their defense back in the paint and build out and meet them. But with uh, with Cole and Wrightsell out on the perimeter for Creighton, Illinois State has to pick them up early because they're going to pull up for that jumper off the fast break. 
Petty committing his first foul. An eight-point lead here for Creighton. Wemhainer to Fowler before it. Oh, Amos, that hurts because he has done pretty well here today. He's really held his own. Five points, several rebounds as well, but that's three fouls. See, the ball's on the opposite side, so Amos is off to that side. Fowler gets him inside pin, and they call it a little body foul against Amos. Thomas, outside Wemhainer, has it if he wants it. He's just cold. Four players battling for it. Make it six. And on the held ball, alternating possession, it will go the other way for Creighton. This is the second time that they have led by as many as eight points. And one of the reasons has been the play of Mike Amos. Well, Todd's so reluctant to shoot that jumper now. I, I hesitate to call him cold. It I, looks like his confidence is gone, but look at the shooting percentage that he's shot, plus the air ball in the first half. It's hard for a guy to have confidence. He's got to step up there, and if he's going to shoot the ball, shoot it. But if he doesn't shoot it, that lack of confidence continues to go on, and that can really hurt a player, and a team for that matter. Petty will inbound. Eight-point lead here for the Blue Jays. Call out to right cell. Picked up by Richard Thomas. Right cell taking it. Right corner. Looks for help. Amos setting the screen. If, if he committed a foul, that would be his fourth, but it's going the other way. Looks like Taylor is the guilty man. Amos that time screened two players. Uh, Taylor got picked up by Amos and Fowler, his own player, because Fowler was tight on Amos trying to deny the entry pass into the post, and Petty came off using both of them as a double pick. And Taylor got called trying to fight around the pick. Picks don't show up on the stat sheet, but the guys that set the picks well are noticed by the coaches. Cole against Wemhater, outside right cell on the drive. Tucker tried to set the screen. Great late dish, and Amos missed. Paul. An incredible miss. Here's Taylor the other way. Fowler. Too anxious was the freshman. Oh, and Taylor ends up how, with the pass. How, how did Petty that pass get through there? Petty's asking the same thing to himself. That pass was open three seconds before that, but by the time Fowler got around to it, Petty was there, and it just went right through him. Tipped away, but right shell gets it. That's tough. On the other end, if they get the dunk, it's a 10-point lead. Now it's six. And a turnover. And right now, the Blue Jays a bit rattled, a bit edgy, and Bob Bender knows that. Look at both both coaches, though. They'll always work the officials. Both these teams have been up and down and throughout the season and throughout the game itself. And he stepped out, apparently. So the ball goes to Creighton. Thomas had no room on that baseline. Illinois State trailing by six here on the road. Here comes right cell. Picked up by Richard Thomas. That's been a matchup all game long. Petty has not been able to get a, a three-pointer against Taylor's defense. Here's Cole off, the, off his foot, I thought, but they got a Wemhainer foul. So Todd Wemhainer will commit the foul, and for him, that's his third personal foul. Three team fouls. Watch Cole, see if he can pick up the foul here. Little nudge. Well, see, the Not official much. underneath didn't call it. He had to look at it. The official on the far side called it on a reaction. Cole, 0 for 4 from 3. That's unusual. Fowler, now to Wemhainer. 33 to 27. Six point lead. Redbirds, and the foul is committed there by Cole as he tried to steal it off the Redbirds. Wemhainer, only the second foul on Duan Cole. Averaged 13.8 points per game last year, and this year, almost 19 a game. You know he's going to be an all-conference player. Taylor, now to Fowler, picked up by Amos. That's out of Fowler's range. That's three-point land. Now it's Thomas. Low to Fowler. Knocked away, and Petty will end up with the ball. Not a good look by Richard Thomas. Right cell so really wasn't up on him. He created a tough pass into the post. Tough, too tough for Fowler to handle. Tucker, the short jumper is a good one. Andre Tucker has nine points. Andre passed up about 12 of those shots in the first half. They weren't guarding him at all. Obviously, at halftime, they told him if they're not on you, shoot the ball. you got to make them honest. If he makes them, or if he even just takes them, they'll have to pick him up. Fowler against Amos, knocked away. 
and the strategy is clear. That's a great block from Tucker. They've got to work on Amos. They want to get him out of the game, and with three personal fouls, he's in some trouble. Watch when Fowler catches this ball. One, two, three, four white jerseys surrounding him. The Illinois State players have to move when the ball goes into the post. Give him a chance to keep their defense honest. They're all standing watching him. That's a nice play, and, and that's just a bad miss from Vandegaard. Not to take anything away from Creighton, as Wrightsell is going to be charged with the offensive foul. Not to take anything away from Creighton, Chris, but Illinois State, that's a tough loss in the part of Reggie Wilson. That changed a lot of things for them. Well, yeah, you, you got a guy that's been starting and starting last year also, and all of a sudden you lose him. I mean, he might as well not even start it because he wasn't able to do anything in this game for him. Besides really what he does loss. individually, he makes Fowler better and vice versa. The turnovers show Creighton with more. And look at the points, though. Big difference, 15 points. Creighton has more than the Redbirds in terms of those points off turnovers. Taylor against Bain. Taylor coming in, nowhere to go. Out to Vandegaard. Some tight defense now in the man-to-man -man by the Blue Jays to Wenhainer. Puts up the three, around and out, but a foul is going to be called on Cole. Well, if they can get him in foul trouble, that's his third. That's a little pass there. Wimhainer coming off. We're going to call the foul. Looked like they wanted to call him slapping on the elbow, but DeWan doesn't think he got it, and the TV camera didn't pick it up either. Does that, mean foul. He, does that mean he didn't get it? No, I'm not no. going to say that. No. He got it. That's three on Dwan Cole. A lot of fouls in this one. Five, three right now. Creighton has more fouls. Here's Wimhainer at the free throw line. This is one thing that Todd does do very well at 90%. The outside part of his game has struggled. That's his first point, though, today. He's a sophomore from Quincy, Illinois. And actually, last year he shot better from three-point land than he did from two. Fitch comes in, Vandergaard sits out for the Redbirds, who have 11 players that get double figures in minutes. Wenhainer makes them both. So Todd Wenhamer has two free throws, and he cuts that lead down. 35-29, the Blue Jays, the home team still with the lead with plenty of time left. Form. And uh, vice versa, Illinois State guards are not getting the ball to Scott Fowler in a position where he can score. Plus, Reggie Wilson is not here. Outside, if you join us late, Wilson in the first minute, injured. Appeared to be his knee or the lower leg area on the right side after he was fouled by Mike Amos. So, right in the first minute of play, the Redbirds have had to counteract that. And it's been tough. Cole stripped away. Great hands by Thomas underneath. Look out, Cole is joining the media. I tell you, Rick Johnson is so happy Cole came back. You know, he had graduated, and he still had a year left of eligibility, so he is attending grad school. They're giving the ball to the Redbirds. Creighton doesn't like that. But anyway, just think where Creighton would be this year without Dewan Cole. He has been such a great performer. Fowler buries it from the outside. That'll force the Blue Jays to come out and get it. Well, if he can't get it in the paint, step out and shoot. Thomas committing the foul there on right side. A little too aggressive on Thomas's part. That's only his first foul. You know, both of these teams who said it before, foul troubles. Creighton, before their game on Thursday night, has been averaging 26 fouls per game, and they only had five in the second half on Thursday night. It was a season low for them, so they thought they were turning the corner there, but they're picking up some of those fouls here today. Amos to Bain. Outside now to Tucker. Almost double dribbled it right in front of his bench. Not a good pass. Thomas deflected it off right cell, though, apparently. Oh, and they called a foul on Thomas there. Wow. Well, Thomas, who had no fouls, has picked up a couple in about 30 seconds. Five fouls, team fouls on each side. Petty is coming in. How about the job Taylor's doing defensively against Petty? You were mentioning before he's a stand-up shooter, so Taylor doesn't have to worry about him on the drive, but still, even behind screens, Petty has not been able to get free. Yeah, he stuck with him good, pretty good, but now he's got an even tougher matchup. He's up against Derek Bain, who is a slasher. Amos against Fowler. Good soft touch by Amos. We've seen a lot of that today from Mike. He's got seven points. Well, the 6'10 freshman is really playing well, especially against such a great inside man for Illinois State, Scott Fowler. Outside, Wimhainer for the Redbirds. 
Looking to isolate Fowler down low if they can. Thomas from three-point land. Oh, a good three for Richard Thomas. That's his second three of the game. Give him eight points. Big time for Thomas to hit that three. It narrows the Creighton lead to three. Well, it's so tough to establish an inside game unless you have some kind of perimeter threat out there that will make the defense honest, bring them out, and open up the lane, which is why Creighton is doing so well inside is, is Illinois State has to play him honest. Petty misses on one of his rare shots from really in the paint area. Blue Jays will get it back. You know, yesterday at the shoot-around, talking to Rick Johnson, he had said he wanted Cole to penetrate to drive the baseline so that it would open things up for him on the outside. He hasn't been able to penetrate, and likewise, the outside shot hasn't worked to enable him to penetrate. So he struggled offensively from that standpoint, but still with seven points, and he's getting an awful lot of the ball out there. And he, along with Wrightsell, leads him in the ball movement. Here's Cole from three, and he missed that. This is the coldest I've seen Cole in a couple of years from three. I've got him as 0 for 5 unofficially. Thomas to the cutting man. Underneath Fitch, he missed. Cole to the rebound. Ron Cole coming back. Good pass to Petty. Coming in on the drive. Petty off the glass in and out. Bain on the rebound. Petty again. Low to Amos. Leaning in. Mike Amos off the glass, but he missed. It looked like he was too soft on that one. They gave him room, though, that time to come inside. Tommy, he, Mike has done the job, Amos, of, of getting open inside just a couple times. Just not able to follow through and finish the play. Petty, he's a freshman. Petty stripped Taylor of the ball. Yeah, it's tough for Amos because if he had come in last year, he could work and understudy Harstad and Gallagher. Instead, he has to come in and be a person you depend upon, and that's tough for any freshman. Well, yeah, right off the bat, they need him inside. He, he's playing as well, or probably even better than they expected, but yet he's still a little rough, but, uh, you know, the guy's a freshman, and he's thrown right into the battle. This has got to be his best game so far all around the season. Here's right south on the move. Jayhawks score two in transition. Six points for right cell. Jayhawks have to get a lot of their points this year off the fast break, off of defenses, off of turnovers, because they don't have the great natural scores down low like they used to have in Harstad and Gallagher. So they really have to earn their points. Wenhainer. On the outside. Now down low. Creighton gone back to the 2-3 zone. Crowd's not real happy right now with the officials. But are they ever at home? Wenhainer hits it for there three. three. Uh, talk about taking the monkey off your back. That one was one of the heavier monkeys that's been around the valley, I think. Yeah, he, he stepped up and, and shot the ball instead of hesitating and think about it, thinking about it. Here's Cole. Outside now to Dancer. Blue Jays working some time off the clock. Amos. Outside now to right cell. Now it's Dantzler. Here's Bain. Down low to Amos. It's a good idea, good look. Illinois State with a good defensive series there. Remhainer. Blocked, but he got it right back. Good quickness to get it back. Thomas, the dish to Kurt. Good nice jumper. Pass. Good job. Brian Thought he was going to take the little jumper, but instead he dropped it off to Kern. It's tied again. Right cell. Now to Dantzler. Cole outside the right cell. Good entry down to Amos, and the pass went off the fingertips of Dantzler. It didn't look like he was ready for it. Well, it's a good time for a break because both teams need to talk things over. We have a whale of a game here in Omaha, tied once more at 39. Wrong <laughs> thing. Too many birds here. We got red birds. We got. We've got the Blue Jays, and you being the ex-Jayhawk, it's easy to understand my confusion. Look at those field goal percentages in the second half. Illinois State's picked it up. So has Creighton, but Illinois State was the poor shooting team in that first half. A miss there from Taylor. Taken down by Bain. Right cell. 
Picked up by Richard Thomas. Outside, Juan Cole. Amos, free for the moment, out of his range. That time, anyway, here's Richard Thomas coming back. Redbirds have a chance to go out in front. They have not led since early in the first half at 22-21. Pitch missed, but Amos blocked him. And it goes out of bounds, so the Redbirds lose out on a chance to get the go-ahead points. Well, that was a nice move by Steve Fitch. Took it right to the glass. Look at him. They wanted a foul there, just cleared him out. Ooh, they... Illinois State might have been right there. Amos coming across with the arm. If he was called for it, that was four fouls on Amos. Here's right cell. Right cell missing. Here's Fowler. If Amos gets, four, gets to four fouls, the game could change. Kegel now to Fitch. Back to Todd Kegel. If Amos gets the fourth foul, well, they're going to put in uh, Vanderheit now, but they'll go back to that four guard rotation, which really helped them out in the first half. Fowler on a miss. Everybody crashed into the boards, and it's going to go the other way. Well, one of the things, too, is if you know that Amos has four, you know that the Redbirds will go after him. And right now, it's a good move, I think, on Rick Johnson's part to take Amos out and put in Vanderheit. You know that Amos will come back. Obviously, if Creighton builds up a lead, you may not see Amos for a while. Well, a lot of time left in the game. Creighton's still on the edge on the rebounds, now by eight. And rebounding was not a strength of this team this year. Intercepted. Right so gave it up. There's Richard Thomas, and he wants to settle it down. Patrell was anticipating that he'd be open coming off that pick. It always works in practice, but not there. Illinois State did a good job of coming across and beating him to the spot. Kegel off the Taylor pick. Outside Fowler, driving into the paint. Fowler taking advantage of Vanderheit, and a foul is going to be called. But Fowler has more free throw attempts than any other forward in the Redbirds, and it's important for him to go toward the basket. Foul appears to be on Bain. Creighton has done a pretty good job of keeping Scott out of the post, and when he has caught the ball inside, they've double teamed down on Fowler. But the last three or four times that Fowler has shot the ball, he's taken it out on the wing, either taking the 15 to 12 foot jumper or taking it to the glass. Six points, three rebounds for Fowler. He's 0 for 1 at the free throw line. One for two now. Scott Fowler with a seventh point. A little bit of senior leadership. We look at Rick Johnson and the Creighton brain trust, but on the senior leadership side, Antoine Hicks comes in at point guard, replacing Richard Thomas. Fowler, good free throw percentage this year. We'll add to that. He has eight points now. The visitors are leading by two. They won their last and first Valley game this year on the road in one of the toughest places to win, Springfield, Missouri. They'd love to make it two straight road wins. There's right cell. To the cutting Cole. Wemhainer with a good second effort. A dish underneath, and Vanderheit didn't appear ready, but fortunately for him, Taylor knocked it out. Some anxious moments for Bob Bender and his assistant coaches. On the outside, nowhere to go for Cole. Kick out to right cell. Well, Hainer's going to have to be careful trailing around the pick on Cole because Cole is so fast, he'll turn the corner and go right to the basket. There's Juan Cole, and he just takes the shot. He's just missing badly from three-point range. Nice box out by Scott Fowler. Just shoved Vanderheide all the way underneath the goal. The only way Vanderheide was going to get the ball was if it went through the basket. Here's Hicks. Outside, Taylor on the drive. And the pull-up jumper, no good, but a foul is committed. That looks like Dantzler has committed that one for the Blue Jays. Should be his second, seventh team foul on Creighton. Five the other way. But that was in the act of shooting anyway. You know that Duan Cole is 0 for 6 from three-point land, and that's uncharacteristic of a guy who is shooting the three this year at 45%. Vandergaard is back into the lineup. Cagle has gone out. A little more hype for this club. Taylor connects. Taylor's done well today. He made sure that Petty was not a factor. He's added 10 points and a few rebounds as well. He's 6 for 7, as you see there, from the free throw line. Eight rebounds for Scott Taylor. Give him another point. Taylor, 11. Actually, Taylor leads all scores. Right cell. Taylor's done a good job against basically a guard. He's either guarded Bain or Petty all day. He's done a decent job out. 
Played outside now to right cell. Cole now to Tucker. The Redbirds are on a 9 0 run here, and right cell will cut it. That was important for right cell, who has eight points. It was a 9 0 run over the last four minutes and 38 seconds. Latrell just curled all the way around that print pick. Antoine Hicks following him at the easy little jumper. The drive by Vandergaard, the kick out to Fitch. Skip pass deflected by Tucker. Bob Bender applauds because he says, right idea, they had an open man. And on that ball reversal, lots of times you can get a lot of nice baskets and good open shots. A two-point lead for the visitors from Illinois State when we come back to Omaha. Hard three-point shots. He's taken them off the dribble a couple times or coming hard off a of pick. And Illinois State has worked hard on trying to keep their guys on him, keep a hand on his face. Now, three-point shooters usually hit their three-point shots standing still. That's a bad turnover there in terms of the foul on Fitch getting called for it. And it'll be the second foul on Steve Fitch for the Redbirds. And now Creighton with a chance to tie. 43-41. They're down by a pair. Creighton has led for a majority of the game. Amos in the paint. Turner on running hook is good. I don't know if Rick Johnson knew that that was in Mike Amos's repertoire or not. Well, he's got his inside game work and had the little jump hook from 10 feet, actually six or seven feet. Nice move by Vandergaard right back at it. Vandergaard now has six. Here's right cell. He was going to go and pull up, and Thomas with quick hands knocked it off right cell. Good defense from Richard Thomas. Tell you, look at the recent history of these teams. Creighton under Tony Baroni took great pride in defense and hard work, and you know it's the same way with Bob Bender's crew. Watch this little move. Took him to the left, came back to over the right hand, right shoulder. We'll jump hook. Vandergaard. Fowler against Tucker. The pull up is good. Scott Fowler. Well, now after, remember in the first half we had a stretch of a couple minutes, maybe two and a half minutes. No one scored. Now everyone is scoring. 47 is getting tired. Fowler is facing the basket now. Been a lot more successful that way. Oh, Amos has got four. That is a costly one for Mike Amos. About a minute after his great jump hook, he has picked up his fourth personal foul, and that sends Dantzler up immediately on the offensive foul on Amos. And so he must sit down. That's a tough one for head coach Rick Johnson. Here's Dantzler, who started the first seven games this year, but his numbers started to drop, and so did his playing time. He's subbed the last few games. Well, now all of a sudden, Illinois State has the game they want. They've got their three big men inside. Crazy. He's got three guards on him. Watch them work at the Fowler if they can. Right now it's Vandergaard looking for Fowler. He's got the edge on Tucker, and he put it in. Scott Fowler starting to dominate now inside. Look, Illinois State continues to beat Creighton's pressure, which has dropped off dramatically out on the perimeter. They're going to be able to get the ball inside, and that's where they have the huge advantage right now. Matt Petty standing up. Very soon you'd expect he might be coming in. Down low, a great pass, and there's Dantzler. That's his first two points of the game. Thomas coming back the other way, 49-45, a four-point edge for the visitors. Richard Thomas. Twice the Redbirds have come back from eight-point deficits, and they've done it this entire game without the injured Reggie Wilson. No report on Reggie from the hospital where he's having x-rays. Vandergaard took a bump down low. Foul on Creighton. And it'll be the Blue Jays' ninth foul. So watch out because the next one, that foul is on Dantzler. That's his third. The next one means the bonus, and it's two free throws every time there's a foul. Not a good position to be in, especially not with five minutes still left in the game. And with Illinois State, as you were mentioning before, being a good free throw shooting team, last year they were dead last at 62.8%. This year it's almost 70%. Vandergaard, two for two from the free throw line, now two for three. The big key there is the guys that are on the floor, for the most part, are all good free throw shooters. Oh, Wilson's back from the hospital. Well, you see as much as we do. We'll try to get a better report than just the visual, but he has the crutches. We don't know if there's any real damage done. The foot is wrapped up, though, as tight as it can be. 
Vandegaard with seven points. Redbird fans are hoping that it's nothing serious on the part of Reggie Wilson. Here's Dewan Cole. Five minutes to go, a five-point lead for the Redbirds. Managing the clock now becomes important. The fouls become important. Figuring out how to get Dewan Cole into the game is important. No second-half points for Dewan. Wenhainer on him. Here's Tucker coming out. Shot clock down to 11. Great defense, and Vandegaard walked with it. He looked like a linebacker who just picked up a fumble in a football game. <laughs> Had that touchdown in sight, didn't he? Oh, yeah. The El only thing he didn't do is spike the ball at the end of the run. Illinois State has done a much better job here in the second half of closing down the passing angles. See, really no pass there at all for Andre Tucker, especially not with Dewan Cole cutting to the basket right beside him. Here's Dewan Cole coming in. Wemheimer is not giving him anything. And actually, even though Thomas did a great job against Cole in the last couple of years, turnover, even though Thomas did a great job on Cole, Bob Bender said today that this is really the matchup he wanted because Wemheimer takes the charge as well and is his better defensive player in terms of defending against guards. Well, he knows his limitations. He doesn't go for the seal. He keeps Cole right in front of him all the time. Thomas can concentrate a little bit more on the offense the other way if he doesn't have Cole to watch. Here's Fowler coming through the big man, but he commits the foul. He came through, but with too much force. A little bit out of control right there, but that was created by Creighton coming with a help defense. You can see Fowler wasn't expecting him to hold up for the charge. Rick Johnson has a tough call, doesn't he, with Amos with four fouls. When does he come back in? Well, they're going to have to put him back in quick because they're down right now, and the name of the game is to be winning. And they're not at that point. You're going to have to forget about the clock pretty darn soon. Apparently, that foul is going against Cole. I lost him underneath the basket. But if it is indeed on Duan, that's four. Well, Creighton's lost all their continuity on offense as soon as Amos set down. And that's a funny thing to say because, really, Mike hasn't been their focal point this year, but he's created something for him inside. Watch Dewan Cole coming. Illinois State, one, two different guys coming over to take the charge. Great help defense. Well, Matt Petty was standing up. I thought he was going to come in, but he must have just been encouraging his teammates because he is back to a seated position. There is Scott Fowler. Remember, it's the bonus situation. Fowler will have two free throws. He has 13 points. He had a quiet first half with only four points, but give him credit, he's picked up his game here. He became more of the go-to guy, and he took that responsibility upon himself in the second half. Well, they pushed him out on the floor a little bit, let him face the basket. Misses the second, Cole will get it. This is the biggest lead the Redbirds have had at six points. Creighton's got to turn it up a notch, or they're not going to win this. Cole missed. Thomas the rebound. And again, he wants to slow it down. They want to burn clock. And they burn the ball instead. That's tough. They knew what they wanted to do, but they just didn't execute. 51-45, the visitors by six with plenty of time left. They've turned the ball over the last two times down the floor. They've got to get something advantage. at the basket, and still they don't have Mike Amos in the game. They're going to take advantage, Chris, of the giveaways. That time Illinois State had the ball, a chance to work off the clock, and they threw it away. But if you come up here and don't get any points, you're losing. You're losing time as well. Lost it. Tucker lost it on the baseline. Good pressure from Vandegaard and Richard Thomas. Clock now reads 315. 51-45, six-point lead, the biggest lead that the Redbirds have had today. Wemhainer and Cole's out of the game. That's five on Dewan Cole. Not a good foul. Creighton has got the small team in. They're able to full court press them. They're quicker. You want to press in a situation like this, but it's still too early to foul. See the body bumping up against Wemhainer going down the sideline. What a tough game for Dewan Cole. In his earlier morning game, 35 points, and he has been so consistent for this team. Just didn't get into a groove today. I think you've got to give some credit to the Redbirds' defense, especially Wemhainer, as we look at Petty coming in to replace Dewan Cole. Even tougher foul for Creighton because Wemhainer's a 91% free throw shooter, and two opportunities is, yeah. is set for him. That's the last guy you want to foul now because everything now is two free throws because of the bonus. Again, the fouls are hurting. Creighton. 
Rick Johnson said yesterday, if you took away all of the free throws, and obviously he says it sort of tongue-in-cheek, he said we would have had seven wins by now because they've just been outshot badly at the free throw line, but that's obviously a major part of the game. Creighton shoots free throws well, but they don't get enough. Creighton needs somebody to take control on the offensive end. Petty. Who's it going to be? 2.56 left. It's the biggest lead for the Redbirds at seven. The biggest lead has been Creighton's eight, and they did it twice. Dantzler. Oh, he should have taken it up. There are times to be selfish and times to be unselfish, and I think right there, Dantzler had the easier chance. Out to Dancer, now to right cell. One thing that's hurting Creighton, Creighton also, they really don't have a go-to guy, and so it's taking a lot of time off the clock trying to find a good shot. Down it goes. This is Tucker taking it in on his own. Hit off the side of the backboard. Vandegaard with it. Well, now it's time to start fouling, going for the ball. You can't get the turnover. You're going to have to stop the clock. Here is Thomas. 10-second violation. Oh, those are critical mistakes that Thomas has made. Two of the last, what, three or four times they brought the ball down. I mean, this game is in Illinois State's pocket right now. It's theirs to win right now. And also, theirs to lose because they're in control right now, but there's still a lot of time left. Anybody that's watched basketball knows that 219 is a lot. Mike Amos on the bench with four personal fouls. Here's right cell. Look at those free throws as we watch the action. Tucker out to Petty. Free throws have been important, and actually they've cost both of these teams this year. Dantzler, oh, offensive foul on Dantzler. Vandergaard went down like he was hit by a truck. Is that a good call? Great call down low. Dantzler's gonna get the ball. Vandergaard's right at, well, I don't know. He was moving uh, backwards. Excuse but me. He's moving backwards, excuse but when you're me. on offense and you lower your shoulder, Okay, that's a tough one. It could go either okay. way. I'll give you 50. Okay, okay. <laughs> You've hit me harder when you try to hog the microphone a couple times. Here's Wemhainer. Oh, I'm sorry, Vandergaard. Out to Thomas. Right cell now to Wemhainer. Fowler. They want to milk time. Well, they've got to stop the clock. But Creighton is, has to stop the clock somewhere. Well, they're in trouble. Every foul is going to cost them two free throws, and they don't want to foul Wemhainer. He's a 90% free throw shooter. But they're not going to stop the clock. They have the pressure all over the floor and just double team or do something. Yeah, Vandergaard's the guy you wanted if you could. And a timeout was called by the Redbirds bench. I didn't see them uh, do it, and we couldn't hear it with all the noise going on, but a timeout was called, and I think a good timeout for Bob Bender because the clock was going down to seven, and it didn't look like, didn't look like they were setting themselves up for a shot, and at the very least, you want to at least get a shot off, have a chance for two, if not three, rather than give up possession back to Creighton because Creighton still has time to get those points and make up the difference. Well, it's still early in the season, and you can see on Illinois State's part by Taylor, seven seconds on the shot clock knocked away by Petty he touched it last he'll be put back in play by Taylor clock won't start until it's touched and now it's Thomas so they still have the seven seconds down to four coming through the dish Fowler missed rebound is a big one for Tucker and every rebound now is a big one for the Blue Jays who are out rebounding the Redbirds Right cell, the turnaround. He forced it, but he got it, and he wants a timeout. Big basket for right cell. Big exchange there, Chris, because they stop the Redbirds on one side and get two quick ones here. Now they can set up their defense. Actually, Illinois State got what they wanted. They got a nice medium-range jumper by their main man, Fowler, but he wasn't able to put it in. Good rebound on uh, Creighton's part, pushing the ball up the floor, but this is what they've needed on the offensive end a minute and a half ago when they were working the ball around around the perimeter. Here's that good shot you were talking about. That's in his range. But it's taken down by Tucker. And Latrell Wrightsell so quick on the move, was afraid that he was going to pass the ball out right here, but instead he gathers himself and hits the big jumper. What can Creighton be told to do defensively? They know that they... ...players from the free throw line. Here's Thomas, 73% free throw shooter. Right cell, a good defender. Off the pit from Vandegaard. That's another thing Vandegaard can do well. Sets 
ring. Creighton's got a double team. There's Vandegaard. Put it up and in. Big bucket for Vandegaard. He has nine points. Here's Whitesell. They're going to need threes here. But a foul on Thomas as Wrightsell started his drive. 38 seconds left in the game, 54-47. That's why it's such a tough call, JP. What are you going to do if you're Rick Johnson? You're going to, if you foul, they're going to get two, uh, two shots at the free throw line, two automatic shots. If you don't, you're going up against a bigger team. And if Illinois State handles the press like they did right there with Richard Thomas bringing a ball up the sideline, then they're going to be able to overpower you inside. So you're really caught in a, in a real uh, tough situation where you almost have to make some something happen in the backcourt. Well, he missed. They had the one and one that time. The bonus. Here's Wenhainer coming right back the other way. And a right cell foul. But that's all he could do, as you were saying. There's no way to really argue that. Nothing right cell could do. Illinois State, even though they have the edge in the lifetime series and the record here as well, have not won here since the 87-88 season. And today, by the way, is the anniversary of their first ever Missouri Valley Conference win, 59-49 against Drake back in 1982. And what a way to celebrate that anniversary. Unless a miracle happens here, they will be 2-0 in the Valley and 2-0 in conference play. Wemhainer. Wemhainer, three for four now from the line. It's a seven-point lead for the visitors from Illinois State, and they've done it without Wilson. Another feather in their caps. He was out from the first minute of play, and we're still not sure what the exact injury is. Right cell with a miss. Marcus Moore, who has just checked in. Right cell from three, blocked, and Vandergaard got it back, kept it in, stole it away. Right cell with a great move individually. Great effort from right cell. Wenhainer coming back on the trap and a foul by Andre Tucker. Redbird's doing it all well here, putting the ball in the hands of the better free throw shooters. I had looked down for a moment, so I'm not sure what the controversy was underneath the basket. Well, they were the fans and most of the bench are Let's concerned see. about where uh, the inbounds pass was thrown. You see Latrell Wrightsell making a nice steal from Vandegaard and taking it to the basket. Now watch Vandegaard. Does he come over the line? Oh. Yep, he does. Crowd was right. But J.C. Leinbach was backpedaling at the same time, wasn't able to see it. The crowd was right, and Wemhainer misses. But with 11 seconds to go, Creighton still would have needed an awful lot. Really, you're talking miracle at that point. Wemhainer connects. Eight points for Wemhainer. Here's right cell. On the outside, the jumper from Bain. Too long. Thomas. That's going to do it. Well, the Redbirds will be 2-0 in the conference. That's a big win. Anytime you win in the conference, it's big, but especially Chris Piper on the road. Two in a row on the road for Illinois State, so a, a nice start for them this year. Tad, it's been a, a strange game for the Redbirds. The guys that they counted on didn't do it in the first half, and we're talking mostly about the Fowlers and the Richard Thomases and the Wemhainers, but they came through in the second half. Fowler ended up with nine second-half points and some big rebounds. Wemhainer had eight all in the second half. Thomas hit a big three when his team needed it, but once they got the lead, aside from a couple of turnovers, a little bit of sloppy play, for the most part, the Redbirds seemed to know what to do. Yeah, they did. They handled it a lot better than uh, Creighton did in the second half. Creighton was not able to open up the floor like they did in the first half, and DeWan Cole, Cole never got involved in their offense. Yeah. When all is said and done, that will be the story that Cole just simply did not have a good game for whatever reason, whether it was Illinois State's uh, defense or not hard to tell from here our players of the game I say players it's plural our diet Pepsi cold players of the game the Scots Scott Fowler 13 points three rebounds and one assist most of the damage he did was in the second half when the Redbirds took over but were it not for Scott Taylor there may not have been that second half performance by Scott Fowler because Taylor had the magnificent first half of play and we'll see those numbers he did so well in this one he ended up by my count he had 11 that I'm not sure. Maybe uh, they changed things with the official score, but regardless, he did well. In any event, it's a big road win for the Redbirds. 56 to 49. They win it for Chris Piper. I'm John Paul Della Camera. So long, everyone from Omaha. Thanks.